In my decade plus as an investor, I have never seen the ascendancy of a stock to quite match what's happened with NVIDIA over the past 18 months. So it all begs the question, what do we think of the stock's valuation right now? I mean, we're talking about a company that's now worth $3 trillion and just recently was the most valuable company on all U.S. markets. Well, let's spend the next couple of minutes trying to figure that out. My name is Brian Stoffel. As of the time of this recording, I do not own shares of NVIDIA, although I certainly would love to have gotten the returns that many of you have already gotten from owning it, and hats off to you for doing that. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, you might be wondering, why should I care about what this person has to say? Well, I've written over 4,000 articles for The Motley Fool. I've uh, got hundreds of uh, videos here on YouTube, but perhaps most importantly, I track my results. And these are results without the benefit of NVIDIA. And as you can see, my portfolio right here is the blue line. You've got the NASDAQ composite, the S&P 500. All of this was accurate as of the beginning of this month. With that out of the way, I also want to give a shout out to finchat.io for sponsoring today's video. You're going to see me using their platform a whole bunch during this video. So let's just look at the ride that we've been on with NVIDIA. Over the last five years, just five years, this company is a 33, 34 bagger. It's 34 x in just five years. And if we just go over the past year, it's tripled tripled over the past year. If we just go year to date, it's up 162%. If we just look at the last month, it's up 33%. And this is happening off of a base of a company that's in the trillion dollar range. Our brains don't believe that companies can continue to grow at this pace, and yet they clearly can, or at least their stocks can. But what about the valuation right now? Well, for that, we're gonna go first to finchat.io. Now, this is a tool I use every day. And if you want to use this, you can try a free trial by clicking on the link below. If you decide to subscribe to it uh, for full functionality, you'll get 15% off by using that link. So first, we could just go to uh, finchat and we can just look at the company's basic metrics. And so what I pulled up here, this is the company's uh, price to free cash flow ratio, currently clocking in at about 82. As you can see, that's high on an absolute basis. It's about in line with where it's been pretty much since the pandemic. And so you might say, well, that kind of seemed reasonable, maybe. What about its forward price to free cash flow ratio? That's actually just 50 two, which shows you how much growth and free cash flow the market is expecting. And that's important. But these basic metrics, I think, are one data point. I think that we can get even better data points if we do a reverse discounted cash flow analysis. Now, the reason is not because it spits out a precise number that it's worth. Valuation is inherently, and this is so important, it is inherently an inexact science. We just do this to get a ballpark estimate of what kind of assumptions, what kind of assumptions does the market have about what this company might do based on the stock price? So that's why I'm doing it. And we want to be very clear about that. So this is what the reverse DCF calculator looks like. But the first thing that I need to do is I need to ask myself, what type of free cash flow margin do I believe NVIDIA could have over the next 10 years? Now, this shows what it's had over the last 10 years. And as you can see, roughly 30% free cash flow margins were a high watermark. They did reach 40% during the pandemic, largely because of folks using their GPUs for cryptocurrency. And they've exploded to 50% free cash flow margins over the past two years, largely because of AI. Now, I don't think it would be prudent to say that they could keep it at 50% free cash flow margins. I am not a computer scientist. I am not someone who inherently understands the advantages that NVIDIA has, the head start that it has in the AI space which with its GPUs. But what I do believe is that over the next 10 years, there are scores, scores of companies that are financially motivated to come up with a good enough alternative to what NVIDIA has to offer at a more reasonable price. And this is not just chip makers. It's the people that buy chips from NVIDIA, the Metas, the Teslas, 
the Googles, the Amazons, the Azures, they're motivated to have a cheaper GPU as well. And so I think if we assume if we assume that NVIDIA can keep those 50% free cash flow margins between now and 10 years from now, we're assuming that all of those companies will fail in coming up with a good enough alternative. I don't think that's a very prudent assumption to make. The most prudent assumption, in my opinion, would be to say that NVIDIA will have a free cash flow margin somewhere in the 20s. But I'm going to be super aggressive and say 35%. That is super aggressive, 35% free cash flow margins moving forward over the next 10 years. So here's what we do then. We go over to the reverse DCF calculator. We put in the ticker symbol. Now, usually we put in the trailing free cash flow, but I'm actually solving for something different here. I'm solving for how fast revenue needs to grow because if we optimize the free cash flow today, optimize it. That means it's steady. Then really what we're finding out is how much does revenue need to grow over the next 10 years? So if we assume 35% free cash flow margins, that would be $28 billion in trailing free cash flow for NVIDIA. Now I know it's higher right now. I know that. But in order to understand the dynamics of what's at play, we're assuming those 35% margins. Now I'm gonna, I, I believe 35% is very aggressive moving forward. And I'm also gonna be very aggressive and give the company a 4% terminal growth rate, which you might say, well, I think they're gonna grow faster than 4% 10 years from now, but we're saying 4% for all the way out and discounting those cash flow models. That's very aggressive. And when we do that, we need to make these prices match. So we could say, does 20% bring it to match? No. Does 30% bring it to match? Mm, not quite. How about 29? There we go. So 29%. So you think, okay, well, we've got our answer. NVIDIA needs to grow its revenue by 29% per year over the next 10 years to justify today's stock price. How reasonable is that? That's the question we ask ourselves. How reasonable is that? Well, let's go back to FinChat. And what we can do is pull up the company's revenue growth rate over the past. And so what we see here is, well, it's been growing triple digits over the past 18 months. So 29% seems pretty reasonable. Now, one nice thing about FinChat is, is that they include analyst estimates. Now I know these are just estimates, but again, it's just to give us a ballpark figure of what might be possible. Now, analysts estimate that the company is gonna grow revenue by 97%. That's a lot faster than 29% and 31% over the next two years, also faster than 29%, and then slow down to 15%. And it's important to remember that this is a cyclical company, but let's, I've been super aggressive so far, the 35% free cash flow margin, 4% terminal growth rate. Let's go to the estimates and pick the absolute most aggressive estimate for the revenue that the company could bring in in 2026 or the year ending January, 2027. And right here, you see it, 240, $241 billion. So if the company, but the most aggressive, hits $241 billion in sales in 2026, well, I did the math. If the company returns 10% per year, which exactly what this discount rate is, then it will be worth 8.1% trillion dollars 10 years from now. It will need sales of $1 trillion in order to meet this. So we can actually, it's actually much simpler than you might think to say, well, okay, so what does the growth rate have to be from 2026 to 2034? Well, we can just plug that in. Remember, let's assume the most aggressive possible assumption of $241 billion We've got to get to just over $1 trillion. And we're not over a 10 year time frame anymore because we assume that over the next uh, two and three quarters years that we're, we're getting the best growth possible. If that happens, then revenue needs to continue growing at 22% for seven years. Think about that, 22% for seven years. And this is where I go back to the fact that NVIDIA is a very cyclical company, cyclical company. 
Here's its revenue growth rates all the way back to 2004. And you can see we have periods of boom and then bust where revenue actually goes down. It grows, it shrinks, it grows, it shrinks, it grows, it shrinks. It has boom and bust cycles. We know this. Now, from 2004 to today, we can look at this and we can see that down here it says revenue has grown at a 21% per year since 2004. And 22% is what we need. But that includes the last two years. If we take the last two years out and just say, well, maybe it's a little bit more normalized if we just go here, well, then it's just growing at about a 14 or a 15 or a 16% rate. So again, you've got to remember what, what we are assuming here is that the most aggressive things are happening and then the company needs to grow its revenue by 22% per year for the next seven years. And you just look, it, 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 it has, it's never been above that 20% rate for more than two years at a time in the past. Of course, if it has a boom year somewhere in there, well, that makes that a lot easier hurdle to jump over. But let's just see what needs to happen to land at this 22% rate. So I've assumed that the terminal growth rate is 4%. That's very aggressive. I've assumed the discount rate is 10%, which is not like a super high bar. This is just to get a 10% return on your investment. I've assumed a free cash flow margin of 35%. While that's below where it is today, I think that's very, very aggressive over the next 10 years. Remember, it, it, if you want it to be higher that, you're assuming that AMD, Intel, chip makers that I can't even think of, and all the customers, Azure, AWS, whoever, they're not coming up with a good enough alternative over the next decade. I'm assuming the most aggressive growth rate over the next three years, which is 50% annualized. And if all of that happens, then revenue needs to continue growing at a 22% clip over the next seven years after that. Now, like I said, it's not like the company cannot do that, especially if there's some boom like crypto was, like gaming was, like AI was, it's certainly possible. But it's really important that investors understand what is baked into today's stock price. The more you know about the company, the more comfortable you might be with these assumptions. But I think it's worth at least diving into where this is. Myself, I am not a specialist in computer chips, but I do know how to look at the ballpark estimates that are baked into the company's stock price. And so it's not something that I'm gonna be doing, but it is, it, it is something that I can understand an investment of if you understand the space. We'll check back in on this one regularly to see how the picture changes. Let me know in the comments section below what you think of NVIDIA's valuation. Until then, Brian.